Hello everyone, we are continuing with our auditions for the Carnegie Whale Recital Hall Gala concert which is scheduled for November 21st. And now uh, we're going to be welcoming on stage Ting Yu Liu, she's a pianist and the age um, group for professional musicians participating in this auditions. Now Ting Yu Liu, the stage is all yours. Best of luck.
Ladies and gentlemen, that's an amazing performance. Uh, just uh, so gorgeous and so confident. Um, I'm going to invite um, for comments um, our judge for this uh, piano uh, division, um, James Welch, is joining us. He is a pianist and con conductor um, and the director of the Progressive Musicians. Uh, welcome, James. Thank you for joining us and please um, give your comments. For Thank you. Well, bravo. You know, the, the, these list um, operatic fantasies are just monstrous and crazy and difficult in every way possible. Um, technically, interpretively, um, you know, I mean, just stretching your hand to the limits and trying to make everything, um, every note sound is just... It, it, it's just so difficult to coordinate all that together and get all the right notes. And I mean, you, you've learned it well, and I feel like it was a good presentation of this piece overall. Um, the um, difficulty with this piece is trying to capture both the spirit of the opera and the characters while also trying to capture the spirit and the interpretations of the fantasy portion that List added. Because I, I think List, someone had said somewhere that List used to um, like to take uh, music, hard music and make it harder. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great and, way to put that. And yeah. I, I forget who told me that. It, it was in a book that um, that was read, and I, I don't know the validity on that, but it would make perfect sense to me. I mean, all the lists that I've played, and it was like a theme based off of something else, and it was already a hard theme. And I mean, look at the Paganini etudes. I mean, th those were extremely hard and then out of that came like the famous a minor uh variations you know i mean he had to make it harder than brahms and, um, and <laughs> he did yeah and yeah and i think rachmaninoff may have given him a run for his money but um but um <laughs> and it, you know and the the famous the campanella um you know from the violin sonata there and, and it's yeah so um you know, a, a lot to incorporate here. Um, so, um, first off, um, I, I, I'd like to just um, mention a couple of, um, not, not so much technical, but um, articulation, um, well, voicing issues. The balance of this piece is extremely difficult. Um, but um, if you have good balance, you're going to have more freedom for um, artistry and phrase shaping, and it's going to be easier. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because it's list, but um, but uh, many times um, the bass notes in your balance were very faint or just quick to dissipate. Um, I wonder, the, James, if that may have been partially the um, the equipment w which was used for it, uh, recording, it's because possible. it's a live performance, obviously. Um, yeah. So sometimes, um, you know, the, the microphones cut out. The, it, um, it's possible, but I um, what I would do to help with that is try to hold the pedal a little bit longer on those bass notes, because we get boop and then it's gone. But if I, I, I could have used more pedaling for my taste, um, it, it was a little too clean at times. And I think that that will help um, give you more sound. Um, the other um, is just like some of the bigger parts of the piece itself, um, especially the opening. Boom. Ba, ba, ba. Make sure that you are over the keys before doing all those chords especially at the end bum 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 you know if you're just getting to the keys at the same time that you have to play it you're not going to get as much power but if you could get over the keys and just in with your elbow and your wrist jut forward you're going to get so much and it's going to be so much easier but it, there were just some things like that that 
I noticed, which I think would open the doors to much more um, phrase shaping and just having the piece develop as its own um, a lot more and a lot easier. Um, so if, if you could work more toward that and then see what type of doors that would open for interpretation, I, 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 think, I, I think you're going to see a big difference. I think we're all going to hear a big difference in your performance. And um, so I would urge you to work that way. And I mean, the overall playing, I mean, the finger work and all that, I mean, flawless. I mean, that's, I mean, I, I was a little jealous because it was just so clean up and all those scales and all that. And you, you did that very well. And you, you've learned the piece, you've memorized it well. Um, and th there's a lot to say for a piece like that, you know, just getting all those notes and rhythms in there. And, um, you know, don't be too discouraged by everything that I'm saying either, because this is list. I mean, this is a piece that, well, all of us <laughs> would be working on for the rest of our careers to make Absolutely. different and taking different comments and doing different things and all that. So, I mean, th there's just, I, I, I would like to hear you do more with it. Um, and then, um, you know, it could be different every time. Yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. It calls for, um, a lot of, um, improv on stage as well, which is kind of hard to achieve when you <laughs> play such a risky piece. Um, but and live. Exactly. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's it's a lot of pressure, uh, but um, I, I just wanted to echo what uh, James was saying um, about bringing out the polyphony, just basically like police each uh, range on its in its own realm, the bass, the middle voices and the upper voices and uh, see if you can maintain that vertical structure through playing the horizontal lines um, that'll add the three dimensional audit auditory experience to your audience and uh, will definitely make the piece sound grander and um, more mm, fitting the, the big concert hall where you're playing um, for sure and uh, yeah I what I liked very much is you taking breaths and that is so hard when you're just about to uh, m throw yourself into an incredibly difficult passage and you have no idea what's going to happen. It's like Niagara Fall. Let's hope we land alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Breathing's uh, important. I, I love that you did take that moment to prepare yourself and prepare the audience in between those segments. Um, I felt that could have been even more um, expressed. Uh, I don't think there is a danger of uh, this piece falling apart because of it, especially like when the repeated big passages, uh, you know, long passages in the right hand, um, different kind of breath prepares us for expectation, like a suspense. But that's just my two, <laughs> two cents into it. Uh, I'm not a judge, so just disregard everything I said. <laughs> and, uh, that's good stuff. And for two cents, I mean... You know, we're we're all about getting a lot out of our sense here. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Know, I mean, <laughs> so okay, yeah, take it. yep, take it, and uh, looking forward to hearing you in the second tier. And uh, I want to thank James very much for joining us and for sharing sharing their expertise with the uh, uh, auditionee for these uh, Carnegie Well Recital Hall Gala auditions. And with this, I would like to also thank our crew of producers. Um, they are just absolute magicians. Uh, here is mm. the Virtual Concert Hall's team. Thank you guys very much for preparing all these programs and providing your extraordinary technical support to all of us. And um, with that, we're going to be saying goodbye for now. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.